the Linux kernel management team has established, quote, kernel guidelines for tool generated content. Now, what you may be wondering is what is tool generated content? It's AI chatbots and AI code generators. The Linux kernel led by the illustrious Linux Foundation is now explicitly going to be allowing code generators, AI chatbots to be coding all aspects of the Linux kernel. Not a joke. This is not April Fools. <laughs> if you would have flashed back two years ago and I would have run the same headline, everyone would have assumed it was a parody, but this is the reality we live in now. This is a completely real thing. Uh, so, okay, let me, let me read through a little bit of this for you just so you can have the actual words. Quote, kernel contributors have been using tooling to generate contributions for a long time. And what they mean by tooling is AI, uh, AI, large language model, AI generating stuff. And it continues. These tools can increase the volume of contributions. At the same time, reviewer and maintainer bandwidth is a scarce resource. Understanding which portions of a contribution come from human versus tools is helpful to maintain those resources and keep kernel development healthy. The goal here is to clarify community expect expectations around tools. This lets everyone become more productive while also maintaining high degrees of trust between submitters and reviewers okay all right let's 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 get into the details here these guidelines apply when a meaningful amount of content in a kernel contribution was not written by a person in the signed off by chain but was instead created by a tool meaning a chatbot or an, an a github ai code generator thing Detection of a problem and testing the fix for it is also part of the development process. If a tool was used to find a problem addressed by a change, that should be noted in the change log. This is not this not only gives credit where it is due, but it also helps fellow developers find out about these tools. OK, so so basically the idea here is this. You can use AI tools, uh, Grok chat gpt uh any of the various ides that have built in code generation you can use any of them you want for any aspect of linux kernel development uh testing code reviews new code generation fixing bugs uh, generating uh change logs anything at all but you should tell people that you utilized some of it there that way you can help other developers find out about cool tools to use AI in order to make more Linux kernel stuff with AI. And then they give some examples of how they recommend people use AI in order to uh, do Linux kernel development. Um, any tool suggested fix, such as uh, this particular fix, uh, scripts, a chat bot generating a new function in your patch to sort list entries, a C file in the patch was originally generated by a coding assistant but cleaned up by hand, the change log was generated by handing the patch to a generative AI tool and asking it to write the change log, the change log was translated from another language, on and on and on. Uh, they then go on to say, as with all contributions, individual maintainers have discretion to choose how they handle the contribution. For example, they might treat it just like any other contribution, reject it outright, treat the contribution specifically like reviewing with extra scrutiny or at a lower priority than human generated content, suggest a better prompt instead of suggesting specific code changes. And I want to, I want to call this out here because <laughs> This is insane to me. This is the Linux kernel team specifically suggesting that it, if someone submits a patch to the Linux kernel that is AI generated, that they say, hey, I generated this with chat GPT or friggin Grok or whatever. Bing, I don't care. That the code reviewer could then turn around and say, hmm, that's an interesting code review, code patch you just submitted. But here's the chat GPT prompt I would have used instead. Try that one. 
instead of critiquing the code they're going to they're going to suggest the critiquing of ai prompts now they're making it very clear they're leaving it up to the reviewers discretion so individual reviewers can can choose to handle any content right any code however they like this is nothing this is nothing new, right? Uh, uh, people on the Linux kernel mailing list regularly have, have lambasted people for the code that they submit. Uh, Linus Torvalds himself is famous for this. Uh, I <laughs> I remember just just a few weeks back, or, or this was back in August. This was back in August, earlier this summer. Uh, Linus Torvalds told a Google engineer that his code, which was specifically about Risk V support in the Linux kernel, was quote garbage, which makes the world actively a worse place to live. End quote. Uh, he also told the developer that his code needs to get bent. <laughs> now. <laughs> and, and and of course the code was rejected um now of course uh, linus and all the other various maintainers of the linux kernel could do the same thing with any of this ai submitted code they could say it's garbage and needs to get bent but the fact that the linux foundation and the linux kernel maintainers are going down this road where they're saying flat out, you know, maybe uh, we could essentially vibe code the Linux kernel. I mean, if they're saying, okay, here's AI generated code, hmm, that's very interesting. And here I'm gonna do a review of that AI generated code, but instead of critiquing the code and fixing it, I'm going to suggest better prompts to use for your AI tools in order to make it better. Well, that's just vibe coding, right? That That's just at this point, that's just AI generated nonsense slop garbage. Uh, and that's what we're now going to get in our Linux kernel. Um, uh, this has been signed off. This is not like some sort of fly by night proposition. They're on the third draft of this now, uh, and it looks like it's pretty well uh, solidified. It's been signed off and reviewed by Greg Crow Hartman and, and a, a whole bunch of other people who uh, are the, the leaders of the Linux kernel world. And they're like, yeah, this looks great. So this is what we've got going forward. And you may remember just uh, just a couple of weeks back, Fedora declared that they're going to allow AI code generation across the board in Fedora as well. And this includes all of the various projects that Fedora hosts or contributes to upstream. Um, they have an AI assisted contributions policy, which states flat out that you may use AI assistance for contributing to Fedora. Uh, here's here's the uh, screenshot of it here. You may use AI assistance for contributing to Fedora. Uh, and it's um, you, you it's basically the same set of of, of uh, uh, rules that the Linux kernel is developed as has putting forth where they're saying flat out, go ahead, vibe code the heck out of it. Just use AI tools to fix bugs, use AI tools to generate new code, use AI tools to make your change logs and 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 write your emails and do everything for you. Uh, you just have to somewhere say, hey, I used an AI tool. <laughs> It's ridiculous. And what's fascinating here is uh, we've also learned that many companies are now instituting policies where they are rewarding their employees for using more AI tools. Uh, this is happening over at Red Hat, for example. Quote, at Red Hat, we are expected to set and meet goals each quarter if we want our full bonus. One of those goals is around introducing AI into our daily work. You've probably seen various Red Hat employees talking about using AI. It's hard to deny that there's a financial incentive. Basically, uh, IBM and Red Hat are declaring to all of their, their employees, find a way to incorporate AI into your work, find a way to evangelize AI, and find a way to incorporate AI functionality into the products you work on. Right. So uh, uh, Red Hat employees, which really run Fedora Linux, are being paid to not only use AI in the development of Fedora, they're being paid to incorporate AI features into Fedora itself. And now we're seeing the same basically a similar thing happening with the Linux Foundation, where they're saying, yeah, uh, 
use AI, rock and roll with it, use AI to develop the kernel going forward. In fact, and I want to point this out, I mentioned this at the beginning, but I want to point it out again because it's important. Quote, kernel contributors have been using AI tools to generate contributions for a long time, end quote. Yeah, does that make you feel comfortable? Does that make you feel super excited about the future? Holy heavens, man. What happens when this bubble bursts? I mean, what happens when the AI bubble bursts? I, I'm personally of the opinion that it's going to burst because it's a bubble. What happens then when we've incorporated AI development and AI features at every stage of Linux kernel development, of, of distribution development, of desktop environment development, everything? Not just the coding, but the documentation and the change logs and the bug fixing and everything. What happens then? What happens flash forward a few years when most of our engineers are, are using AI tools to essentially vibe code the Linux kernel and they hit problems because of that, but you know, their skills have basically atrophied because they're not doing actual development anymore. They're just AI generating, prompt generating things. I, I think it's preposterous. I think it's absolutely patently absurd that this is happening. And it's a terrible, 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 terrible idea. I, I can't I can't think of anything nice to say about this. There's just nothing good here. Uh, I know I know a lot of you guys like like the AI tools and the chatbots and the whatnots. Uh, but uh, no, 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 don't like it. Don't like it. There's nothing good here. This is all bad. This is bad for now. This is bad for the near future. This is bad for the long term. Can't think of a positive here. Uh, <laughs> thank you to the London Journal subscribers for allowing me to to cover this that this is that this is happening because it's absolutely patently insane and absurd. <sighs> Go to Lunduke.com, click on some links, subscribe to the Lunduke Journal wherever you want. It's free to just grab the shows. It's free to, to grab the posts that I put up. They're all free. That way you can spread the good word about the real news in the tech industry. But of course, if you want to support the Lunduke Journal, that's all right, too. In fact, to celebrate the Lunduke Journal recently hitting 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, We've got a 50% off deal going on on subscribers uh, for, for real subscriptions, real subscriptions with real perks. 50% off monthly, yearly, or lifetime subscribers. Go to lunduke.com and, and click the 50% off link, uh, and you can subscribe and grab all of the cool perks like the DRM free MP4 downloads, access to the exclusive forum, a whole bunch of nerdy PDF eBooks. And I mean, this is all over the map. There's goofy stuff. There is literally in there, this is not this is not a joke. A uh, a paper doll book starring Tux the Penguin. It's a real thing. It's in there and it's free. You can just print it on your printer and and uh, cut out paper doll tuxes with different outfits and 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 backdrops and whatnot that you can play with your kids with. Why? I don't know. Why not? Why not? I say uh, it's all up there again. Go to lunduke.com. You can click on the link for the 50% off thing. Uh, and if it, the 50% off sale isn't currently going on, go to lunduke.com and find some other way to subscribe. It's pretty fantastic no matter what. Uh, and of course, if you grab a lifetime subscription, you can get on the lifetime subscriber wall of amazingness. If you are not on this wall and you are a lifetime subscriber, but you want to be on the wall, just email me. Again, I'm up, uh, go to lunduke.com. My email address is up there and uh, ask to be put on the wall. I'm not going to put anyone on this wall unless you ask for it, right? I'm not going to out you. <laughs> if it's going to get you in trouble with some project you work on or some, some employer you have, I'm not going to put you on the wall. But if you want to be on there, whether you use your real name or anonymous or whatever you want to, <laughs> however you want to be called, go ahead and email me and I'll put you up on this amazing lifetime wall. Thank you, by the way, to all of the lifetime subscribers. Thank you to all the subscribers. I could not do this without you. Because of you, the Lunduke Journal is free of ads. We are free from big tech influence. We are decidedly non-woke. We're fully audience supported. Really, I mean, when we're talking about independent tech journalism, baby, uh, you make it possible. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes, across the inner tubes, I do declare and broadcast. <laughs>